Good evening everyone, my name is Nicole G. Beltran and today we are going to tackle about social responsibility. So, let's start by defining social responsibility. So, social responsibility is an ethical theory in which an entity, be it an organization or individual, has an obligation to act for the benefit of the society at large. So this theory suggests that we have our responsibilities to our society, our responsibility to act and fulfill our civic duties. For example, as simple as participating in your local community and paying taxes are already considered a socially responsible act. In this way, there must be a balance between economic growth and the welfare of society and the environment because social responsibility doesn't only focus on the economic aspect. It also concerns the welfare of the environment and the society as a whole. So, for example, as an individual, pili man ta purely nagaskwela para soon magkatrabaho o makakwarta. We also uh, participate in our local communities, we vote for the right candidate, we respect each individual, of course, we donate when there is a disaster, we promote our respective advocacies. All of these are examples of social responsibility and our goal is to help those people in need, to help our community or our country grow, to preserve our environment. In short, we are all doing this for the benefit of all of us. So, kung dili na to i-apply ang social responsibility, kung wala ni tanan, di na to ni buhaton, then dili ta mag-last long because our goal lang man is for economic growth. Wala balance. So, it is important that we apply social responsibility whether to ourselves or to our organizations. So, moving on, since social responsibility applies to all of us, this can also be applied in businesses, and it is called the corporate social responsibility. So, business, in addition to maximizing shareholder value, must act in a manner that benefits society. CSR emphasizes the development of shared value for both shareholders and stakeholders, creating a double win scenario. So, the concept of CSR is just similar to our discussion in the previous slide. The goal is not only for economic growth, but also for the welfare of the society. Ang kalahian lang kay ang CSR is applied to business organizations. So, when we think of operating a business, our primary goal in mind lang man di ba, is to gain and maximize profit. Little did we know about the concept of CSR in which, in addition to maximizing our profit, it also allows companies to put value into its stakeholders. So, kinsa dito? Kinsa dito mga stakeholders? So, stakeholders are those that hold a significant, in, significant influence or impact on the company. In general, stakeholders are customers, investors, suppliers, the local community, and a lot more. As long as dili mag, uh, dili mag last long ang company kung wala ni, wala ni sila na mga tao, ang mga stakeholders. So when a company applies corporate social responsibility into their system, then it encourages them to put importance into their stakeholders not just on the profit gain of the company. So, according nga kina John Dewey and James Tuff, it is not sufficient to view companies as purely economic machines and that companies should be involved in public duty as well. Also, CSR is not a static concept. It is a moving, evolving target, according to Noreen Kennedy, of the U.S. Council on International Business. So, what's the meaning of CSR is not a static concept? 
So, the concept of CSR already existed before. It dates back to the 1930s. So, as time goes by, ang pag-interpret sa mga tao about CSR is nagabago. According pa kay Kennedy, na there is no solid definition of CSR. It all depends on company decision makers on how they will apply CSR. Some interpret CSR to mean what companies should do above the call of law, even though dili gina require sa ilahang government na apply ang CSR, still ilahang yap on. Others think it should be legally mandated at the national or international level. Others also thought that it is already here and we are already doing it. So that is according to Noreen Kennedy. So also take note that CSR is not a re replacement for the governmental role and responsibility in meeting challenges of sustainable development. So dili dapat magsalig ang government about the corporate social responsibility uh, of the companies because the government should also uh, implement its ways of mandating social responsibility to the society because mauman na ilang role, di ba? So, the scope of CSR varies country by country, region by region, interest group by interest group. So, according, di ba, to what I've said earlier, there is no solid definition of CSR, kaya nagavary jud siya. Also, there's not a one-size-fits-all solution for CSR in which uh, which makes it quite a challenge because until now, we are still, still looking for an internationally agreed-upon approach. There is no established way of implementing CSR, but at a minimum, it includes environmental issues and it also takes on social, ethical, governance, health, and other issues in the society. So it is a very broad concept to cover and it is a challenge for the business community. So now, let's proceed to the settings of corporate social responsibility. So this slide answers the question, what are the ways in which CSR can be applied? So this is through avoiding human rights abuses, upholding the right to join or form labor unions, eliminating child labor, avoiding workplace discrimination, protecting the natural environment, guarding against corruption, and lastly, undertaking philanthropic efforts. So these are just examples of how corporate social responsibility can be applied in your companies or organizations. So you can, uh, this can be your guide or you can add more as long as it doesn't violate anyone's rights and as long as it can benefit all of us. I've also listed some of the largest corporations in the Philippines that implemented the concept of corporate social responsibility and some of them are San Miguel Corporation and San Miguel Corporation uh, applied corporate social responsibility into their organization by helping these following aspects the education health and nutrition environment and lastly the housing and re rehabilitation in our country the second the second company is the nestle philippines so they help to develop the these aspects the agronomy assistance education and manpower development community development, health and nutrition, and the environmental protection and preservation. So the next one is the SM Foundation Incorporated. So SM Foundation Incorporated is the corporate social responsibility arm of the SM group of companies. So imagine SM or the CEO of SM established a foundation just for the corporate social responsibility of their uh, company or organization. 
So, through SM Foundation, the SM group of companies has been able to help the less fortunate in the communities it serves by supporting their needs in education, health, community development, care for the environment, and for, for persons with special needs. So, actually, uh, I have uh, searched, I have found out a lot of uh, companies that applied corporate social responsibility. And these are uh, these three companies are just some of the examples of them. So now let's proceed to the social responsibility perspectives, the shareholder and stakeholder approach. So many people in society at large, and especially the business community, do not believe that corporate social responsibility is a good idea. So Milton Friedman, in particular, an economist, once said that we should not have CSR because the constraints should be given by the government so a company should maximize profits as much as it can and the law should provide it with constraints. So he believed that there is only one social responsibility of business. And this is to use its resources and engage in activities designed to increase its profits so long as, it's, as it abides the law. So this statement of Friedman characterizes one of the two perspectives related to social responsibility. And this is the shareholder model. So shareholder, shareholder model states that the only social responsibility of business is to maximize profits. Engaging on what is termed social responsibility is in direct conflict with the shareholder model because it diverts resources and energies away from profit maximization behaviors. For example, giving, giving to a charitable organization. So a lot of companies do that, right? So Friedman isn't arguing against donating to your local church, but he is arguing that business is not the appropriate vehicle to do it. Friedman believed that business businesses should pursue profit maximization, essentially to make as much money for shareholders as possible. And with extra cash, shareholders can donate to whatever organizations they wish. So that is the system that Friedman proposed. Friedman's views represent only one of the two perspectives related to social responsibility. The second perspective is known as the stakeholder model and it states that businesses have a responsibility to not only seek profits but they also satisfy the interest of multiple stakeholders. So these stakeholders represent individuals or groups that have an interest in the actions and behaviors of the business. So stakeholder model agrees upon the idea of corporate social responsibility and the shareholder model is not or do not agree to the concept of corporate social responsibility. So moving on, the idea behind the stakeholder model is that business decision makers need to maintain a positive relationship to society and their environment if they are to operate effectively. Failure to do so can harm the business reputation that can ultimately affect their ability to operate. So in order for us to understand more about the stakeholder model, let's emphasize more about who are those stakeholders. Since stakeholders do not have the same amount of influence in an organization, we can commonly separate them into two categories, which is the primary stakeholders and the secondary stakeholders. So first is the primary stakeholders, which represents those individuals or groups who have a greater influence on the organization. On the organization. And the examples of primary stakeholders are customers, employees, 
investors, suppliers, government agencies, and the local community. So these groups are at utmost importance because the business relies on them for a, for a long-term survival. For example, unsay mahitabo sa business if wala na customers na mo avail sa imong products or services. Unsay mahitabo sa business if withdraw sa mga investors ilang mga investments. Unsay mahitabo sa business if mag-resign tanan ni mong mga employees and so on. Diba it will surely bring the business down. So under the stakeholder model, business decision makers, top priority should be satisfying the various interests of these groups. And, and the next one, although secondary stakeholders are not as critical as primary stakeholders, they still can influence public perceptions on the business. So common secondary stakeholders include special interest groups, and the media. So secondary stakeholders, these groups don't conduct business regularly on the organization, but what they can communicate or choose to communicate can have an impact on public perception. So uh, according to what I've said earlier, examples of secondary stakeholders are the media and special interest groups. So uh, if you are not familiar with special interest groups, those are groups that uh, have the same interest or have the same advocacies in their uh, country. So, um, so as an example, if your company's decision maker subjects to a decision that they know will affect one aspect of social responsibility, then of course, special interest groups and the media would investigate and spread the information to the public that will ruin the company's reputation. So, for example, the issue, the issue of the British Petroleum's Deepwater Horizon oil spill is an example of the scenario I've described earlier. So, on April 20, 2010, the oil drilling rig Deepwater Horizon, operating in the Maconda Prospect in the Gulf of Mexico, exploded and sank, resulting in the death of 11 workers on the Deepwater Horizon and the largest oil spill in the history of marine oil drilling operations. So, although they warranted the criticisms, Special interest groups and the media, which is the secondary stakeholders, played a significant role in transmitting information related to the British Petroleum's decision that led to the explosion and subsequent oil spills. So I found out that the British Petroleum decided to cut costs to the operation and it certainly led to this disaster. So learning from this mistake, it is important that we take into consideration the social responsibility whenever we make large decisions in our company or even to ourselves. Consider the risks of your decisions because you can take back what already happened, just like uh, what happened to the uh, to the disasters to the disaster of the British Petroleum's Deepwater Horizon oil spill. As you can see, this is uh, just uh, this is an image that portrays the effect of the disaster of the British Petroleum's oil spill that I've mentioned earlier. So, you uh, as you can see, it really affects the biodiversity in that uh, large area. So, you can't take back what already happened. And I have found out also that uh, the di disaster in 2010 still has or still existed right now. Wala pa siya nawala totally. So, ang effect jud ato na disaster is nako. Just because uh, the decision makers decided to cut costs. So, uh, thinking about it, what they thought or 
what they have in mind is uh, what uh, their goal is for the economic growth of the company. So <clears throat> it is important that we really should consider social responsibility when we make our decisions. So it is better to spend more for the safety of your stakeholders rather than cutting costs to maximize profits. So, di ba, 11 workers, na pa 11 workers na namatay and uh, na-destroy pa jud ang environment. So, we should learn from this mistake. So, in conclusion, even though the law doesn't require us to implement the concept of corporate social responsibility, we have our moral sense to behave in an ethical manner and act responsibly for the benefit of everybody. So that would be all for my report. Thank you, and I hope you learned something from my report.